Hey guys, HerbQuest here, haven't said that in a while, with another audiobook. Now we're starting to get to the end of the Player Own Bookshelf series. I've actually got to go through my notes pretty soon to the Brutal Green Dragon Lair and collect the pages from that. I've yet to do that. So I thought I was ready to do the whole series, but I'm missing one book. But here we are with the start of the Zaya lore, the lore behind Zarek and the raids with the chambers of Zarek. All these next coming books will be books from the raids dungeon. Coming up first with the Manifesto of Nestirio. This book is first obtained when you defeat the raids boss known as Nestirio. Hope you guys enjoy this reading. Manifesto of Nisterio. Oh, happy accident. Magic has been child's play to me all my life. With a few words of power, I could twist the world to suit my pleasure. Our Lord Zarek has made full use of my gifts. I dare say that my power was instrumental in his ascent to greatness, and he rightly rewarded me by appointing me as his high priest. It is, of course, a matter of regret that I could not sustain my dominion over the city of Karen. But Karen is a limited place, full of limited people. In these caverns, I have no doubt that we shall all learn to transcend such limits. Indeed, my accident has already imbued me with power beyond my imaginings. We had always known that this mountain housed great power. That is why we traveled here, after our exile from Karend. However, it is one thing to perceive power, but it is often much harder to wield it for oneself. And then came my accident. I had entered a cavern in the great labyrinths under Mount Quidamortum and found it to contain the same purple crystals that surround the dark altar. Immediately, I was drawn to investigate, for such crystals are a sign of the dark altar's magics. If we could learn to wield this power for ourselves, nothing could prevent our triumphant return to conquer Karend once more. My attention was focused solely on the crystals. I failed to detect a tremor in the cavern. Suddenly, the roof gave way, and I felt myself pinned to the ground by the crushing weight of the rocks falling from above. I admit I panicked. Archaeus Elder, though I am, I am not invulnerable, and the power within the mountain could have destroyed me. In my shock, I failed to maintain the bindings of my incorporeal form, so my essence flowed outward, intersecting with the rocks and the fragments of crystal within them. That was how it happened. I should have faded away into oblivion, but instead I felt the rocks and the crystal shards respond to my essence. I could move them. I could control them. And I could control the power that resided within them. Though such a simple accident, I had stumbled upon a method of wielding the power of the caves for myself. The rocks and the crystals had become an avatar for my essence, and their power was mine to command. I returned, transfigured to the others. They were astonished by my new form and feared for their lives. They were right to be fearful. My power was beyond anything they could comprehend. With a mere thought, I could have collapsed the mountain upon them all then returned to Karen to claim the city as my own. In fact, that would be fitting. 
Zarek appointed me as his high priest, but the time of priests is over. What is a priest? A priest is a conduit between the mundane and the transcendent, yet the priest remains mundane. A priest is a guide teaching the plodding folk of this world to look beyond the everyday toil of their labor, elevating their thoughts to seek the divine, yet the priest must plod among them. I am not the priest. I am the God. I am the God, and I need no priests. There is no need for a guide or a conduit, not when my power is manifest. If Zarek will not recognize me as his lord and master, away with him. Our lord Zarek commanded that we preserve this document as a warning. Let the fate of Vaza Nistrio serve as an example to anyone who dares challenge Lord Zarek. Although the former high priest had indeed become mighty, Zarek was able to bind him to four great crystals of power, imprisoning his avatar forever in this place. As a punishment for his hubris and treachery, he shall stand guard in Zarek's chambers until the mountain crumbles to dust and his essence is finally released into oblivion. And we've reached the end of the Manifesto of Nistrio. Hope you guys found that story interesting with the whole plot twist in there. We find out that Zarek is a little more narcissistic than Nestrio. Both are have equivalent degrees of narcissism, but maybe Xerix is more could say justified because he's the one that truly has the power, it seems. Xerix seems like the most powerful being in all of Zaya thus far in the lore. I'm interesting to find whether he's like his own god or if he's aligned to one of the existing gods or what Zarek is exactly, whether he's a true deity or just thinks himself to be. Maybe one of these upcoming books will help us find that out. Till next time, peace guys. Oh, by the way, one more thing. Since these Zarek books are a little more involved, I think I'm going to stop posting three a day and take it down to one a day. Sent just because these stories are... I don't want to say better because I don't want to disrespect the old lore, but they're more complex and unsolved because I don't think there is a clear reference as to what Zarek is. At least not yet, but maybe we'll find it in one of these next books. Alright, peace guys.